we've been dealing in this unit so far with sequences and series. So far we've only seen sequences. So this is our first time we're going to be seeing series. Now it's not actually a huge difference between a sequence and a series. So a sequence is an ordered list of numbers with a pattern. That's what we've been seeing so far. We've been using sequences to write explicit formulas and um, we've been writing those explicit formulas to be able to find any term in a sequence. Well, now we're going to be dealing with series. So a series is different than a sequence, but it is similar. So a series is the sum of the terms of a sequence. So in just, instead of just having an ordered list of numbers, a series is actually finding the sum of that ordered list of numbers. So we're adding up the ordered list of numbers. So does everybody understand the difference between a sequence and a series? Series is finding the sum of the sequence, and sequence is the ordered list of numbers with a pattern. So today we're going to be dealing with arithmetic series. And yes, with series we're just adding them. Okay? So if you understand, so like for example, 2, 4, 6, 8, that's a sequence. A series would be taking that particular sequence, since we know the beginning and ending, we can add those up. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8. 20. What is it? 20. 20? Yeah. Okay, sweet. So that would be 20. Good. Okay. Okay, so now we've got to talk about a finite sequence and series. So, when you know two terms and the number of terms in a sequence, you can find the sum of the terms. So to be able to actually find the sum, you need to know where the sequence starts and ends. If you don't know where it ends, you have no idea where to stop adding. Does that make sense? That's what's consider, considered finite. So if you know the start and the end of a sequence, it's considered finite. And you can find the sum. So... This is an example of a finite arithmetic sequence. Now, the reason it's arithmetic is because we're going to have a common difference between each term to the next. So, let's look here. What's our common difference? 9 minus 6? 3. 3. What's 12 minus 9? 3. What's 15 minus 12? 3. So, aren't we just adding 3 each time? That's what makes it arithmetic. And once again, this is a sequence. 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. It's finite because we know the first term is 6 and the last term is 18. So, we know we can find the sum. Um, and that would be considered a series. So finding the sum is just a series. So we can do 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15 plus 18. And so our sum would be 60. Is everybody comfortable with that? Now notice in this particular sequence, to be able to actually find the sum, we do need to know the number of terms. Um, so in this one, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms, right, everybody? So this was a sub 1, our first term, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and this is a sub 5. So we have five terms in this particular example. Is everybody good with that? So now this is the general formula to find the sum of an arithmetic series. So instead of just sitting and adding them by hand, because this was an easy one, so it's just as easy to add this one up by hand. Sorry, let me get out of there. But some of them aren't going to be this easy, okay? So here's the formula. You need this. If you're not writing this down, you're a crazy person. So the formula to find the sum of an arithmetic series is S of n, which means we're summing this many numbers in a sequence. So the sum is equal to n divided by 2 times by a sub 1 plus a sub n. So now understand what each thing means in the formula. We're summing up this many number of terms. So n stands for number of terms in the sequence. I'm going to say that again. n stands for the number of terms that you're adding up in a sequence. And then a sub 1 is the first term in the sequence. a sub n is the last term in the sequence. So I'll say that again. n is the number of terms that we're summing up in a particular sequence. Okay, do you all have the formula written down? Yes. So, would you use that one for the one that one? Yes, so we could actually, so this one I didn't use the formula because this one was really easy to just quickly add them up, but we could have used the formula for this one. So how many terms was there? Five, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see if we come out the same. So the number of terms was five, because there was five terms, divided by two, and then what was our first term? Six, right? And do you see what I'm doing plugging into the formula here? to check it out to make sure we've come out with the right thing. So 6 plus the last term was 18, right? Let's actually calculate that. It better come out to be 60 or something's went wrong somewhere. So let's type it into our calculator, guys. You should all practice. 5 divided by 2 times 5. 
times by 6 plus 18, 60. So do you see how I used the formula? I didn't use the formula. Did we get 60? Okay, awesome. Okay, so now the difference between a finite sequence and series and infinite sequence and series, um, you can't find the sum because you won't know the first or last term. So infinite means it's continuing forever, right? We have no idea where it ends or maybe we have no idea where it starts. That's considered infinite. Well, if it's infinite and continuing forever, you have no idea where to stop adding. Does that make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't be able to find the sum. So, and that's for arithmetic. So this is an example of an infinite arithmetic sequence. It's infinite because we have 3, 7, 11, 15, comma, dot, dot, dot. That means it's continuing. Now, we have no stopping point. We're not told a stopping point. So we're like, okay, each time aren't we adding 4? We could sit now and find, try to find a series, but are we just going to keep adding 4? And then when do we know when to stop? Does that make sense? Okay, so, I mean... We can't find the sum of an inf infinite arithmetic series. Is everybody comfortable with that? Okay. We all know the difference between infinite. So this was fine, right? Because it had a start and end. And oops, infinite because it had a, it didn't have an end. Yes. We'll get there. Okay. So here's my okay, guys. So stay with me. Here's some examples. So it says find the sum of this arithmetic series. So I'm going to use the formula. This one would actually be easy just to add up real quick, wouldn't it? Yep. It's finite because we have a star in it. But let's use the formula. So first of all, how many terms do we have? A sub 1, A sub 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so we have 5 terms. So 5 divided by 2, this is the formula for sum of an arithmetic series. What's A sub 1? 3. 3 plus A sub N. Go, calculate, go. You guys are 10 times quicker. This lesson's going to go much quicker. You have 35. Okay, I'm going with it. Did we get 35, guys? Okay, sweet. Next example, a little bit harder here. So carefully looking at this, and it says, find the sum of the arithmetic series. So this one's actually going to take some more thought. We do have a start and end, right? Yeah. So it is finite, therefore we can find a sum. So first of all, we, to use this formula, need to know how many terms. This is the hardest part, but I think I'll be able to make it make sense to you. How many terms are we going to have here to sum up? Because we need to know how many terms we're summing up. So let's see here. Let's think about this, okay? So this is the way, this one's pretty straightforward. I even asked my mom if she could do it. And she did it, and that's incredible. So this one's easy, but let me explain how you can think through this. So how many, so we're adding two each time, correct? Yeah. Okay, so let's think about it. This is our first term, right? And then this is a sub n. We don't know what term that is right now, right? We're trying to find n. So what you can think about is how much distance is between 2 to 100? So when you take 100, like how many, how many numbers are between 2 to 100? So 100 minus 2. You need to be listening to this. So how many numbers are between, how did we get from 2 to 100? Like how? 98, right? 90, I mean 100 minus 2. So I did 100 minus 2, and that gave us 98. Now, we're not splitting that 98 by 1, though, so, right? So that's not going to be the 98 term. What are we splitting this by? 2, right? So you can take 98 divided by the common difference, which is 2. So we'll divide by 2. So 49. So guys, we're adding 2 49 times to finally get here. Now, stop, because listen. That's not the 49th term. This was our first term. So if we added 49 to 1, what, would our, what term will we be on? 50. It is 50. Because that doesn't account for 2, which was our first term. Because I wanted to know how much, if you were listening, but you guys were canoodling, um, I wanted to know how much distance was between 2 to 100, right? Because one of these split evenly. So I said, how much total distance is between 100 to 2? Like, how many numbers did we add? Does that make sense? So I did 100 minus 2. There's 98 numbers between to get from, to get to 100. But then we weren't splitting it in 1, so we didn't go 98 times. We're splitting it in 2s because the common difference was 2. So I took 98 divided by 2, which is 49. But that didn't account for the first term. Yes? Can you just do, like, the last one divided by 2? No, because they're not always going to be a common difference of 2. So that actually is what I ran into when I was preparing the lesson. 
I kind of gave, came up to that same generalization. Then I got to another one, and I'm like, what the heck? I'm getting it wrong. And then it hit me. Oh, duh. Psh, psh, psh. You were not always dividing by two. So that's a good question. Okay. We're going to always divide by the common difference, though. And I'll explain that better and, and more, and it'll get more, it'll make more sense with the next example, okay, guys? So now we can go through and do the formula. So our n, be careful, our n is 50, right? Because that's just 49 to get to 100, so we have to account for the first term. So now n is 50, so we're summing up 50 terms. That's going to be equal to 50 divided by 2 times by a sub 1, which is 2, plus a sub n, which is 100, our final term. Calculate it, go. The sum of 50 terms is what? For this one. 25. 2, 5, 5, 0? Yep. Okay. Sweet. So why wouldn't you put the form like, instead of doing 52? Like, why didn't you do 15 to 52? Because there's not 52 terms. <laughs> 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Keep going. Count on your fingers. That'll take you a while, but you'll get 50 terms. Does that make sense? Okay, another one. So this one's a little bit, a little bit harder here. Okay, so we're finding the sum of this arithmetic series. I know this is kind of hard at first, but it'll get easier, I promise. So first of all, we can find it because it's finite. We start with four, we end with ninety-nine. So first of all, to be able to find the sum, you need to know how many terms you're summing up, which is n, right? So now, once again, I'm saying, okay, how many terms are between forty-nine to ninety-nine? How many numbers in ones? Like, how, how many numbers are between 4 and 99? Like, how did we get from 4 to 99? How much did we add? Okay. So, do 99 minus 4. 95. So, 99 minus 4. So, the distance between 4 to 99 was 95, correct? Yeah. But now, we're not splitting it in ones. That would be adding 1 each time, correct? Yes, yes. We're adding what? So, how many, what are we adding? What's our common difference? Five. So aren't we splitting that 95 into five? Yeah. Okay, so we're dividing that by five to see how many times we needed to add to get to 99. 19. So that's 19. Now careful. Plus the one. This was a sub one, right? Yeah. We added five 19 times. Yeah. Yeah. So all together, wouldn't that be a sub 20? Yes. Does everybody understand why? Yes. Okay, awesome. So now we can plug it in. The sum of 20 terms for this particular series is 20 divided by 2 times a sub 1, which is 4 plus a sub n, which is 99. Go, go, go. 1,030. 1,030. Good. So the sum of 20 numbers in this series was that. Are we all good? Yep. Okay, we're getting that last one, and I'll let you work. Okay, so once again, we're going, let's see, we can, can we find the sum of this? Well, yes, we're told it's arithmetic, so we know it's going to have a common difference. So we're starting at negative 3, ending at negative 30. So if, once again, we've got to figure out how many terms we're summing up. So once again, how did we get from negative 3 to negative 30? So I want you to do negative 30 minus negative 3 to figure out the distance from negative, how many did we add to get to negative 30? You got negative 27. Okay, now, so that would be adding 1, though, right? That'd be subtracting 1 or whatever. So what's the common difference? Now, don't we find that by doing negative 6 minus negative 3? So what do we get? Negative 3. So aren't we subtracting 3 each time? Okay, so we're going to divide that by negative 3 because we're splitting that distance into 3, right? So what do we get? Nine. So once again, we subtracted three nine times to get to here. So if we started at a sub one, that would put us at a sub ten, correct? Is everybody comfortable with that? Yep. Okay, awesome. So now we're doing the sum of ten terms is equal to ten divided by two times negative a sub three. one, negative three plus a sub n, negative thirty. The sum of ten terms is what? One six five? Yep. 165. Good. Questions? Are we all good? You're ready to practice yourself. Why did I say it's negative? Oh, it's negative 165. Because aren't we adding a lot of negatives? So couldn't it, the sum add up to be a negative number? Okay, awesome. Did you divide by negative 10? What do you mean divide by negative 10? 
negative. What's the answer? What's the answer? It could be negative, right? If we add up negative 1 plus negative 2 is not negative 3. Right. So we could have a negative sum. Right? It doesn't make sense of why we could have a negative sum. Right. 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 Yeah, our sum was negative 65. That's our answer. No, it's oh, what are you asking me? No, it's not negative 10. There was 10 terms. Your n won't be negative, because you're going to have a positive number of terms every time. Okay, do one through seven. Okay, so now we're going to talk about something. It's actually, we're going to be doing the same type of thing, but it's just going to be given different notation. So this is summation notation. So you can use great capital letter sigma to indicate a sum. Isn't a series just a sum? Right? Yeah? Isn't a series just a sum? We talked about how a series is the sum of a sequence of numbers. So this is a series, because, but it's just writing it in different notation. So once again, this great capital letter sigma is considered the sum. And we know that sum just means addition, right? So this is the notation you're going to see. The sum of the lower limit and the upper limit will be up here. So that would be like how many terms and we're adding up. So 1 to 10, if we're adding up 10 terms. Does that make sense, Kyle? And then this will be our explicit formula. There's like too much going on. Then the explicit formula. So we're going to be given the explicit formula. So before we were given the sequence, right? Or the series, I mean. Then we were able to plug it into the formula. So now we're going to be, in a sense, given the series. It's just going to be given differently. And we're still going to be asked to find the sum. Because that's what this means, is sum. So it's going to be, instead of giving, giving you the actual numbers, it's going to give you the explicit formula to actually find the numbers. Because we know how, like, an explicit formula is just something that, that you can plug in and find any term of a sequence, right? Okay, so it'll make more sense when I, we do an example. Now, keep in mind, we're in this lesson, we're dealing with arithmetic series. Now, arithmetic means you're adding or subtracting the same amount each time, right? Yeah. Everybody? Arithmetic, right? So, if you think about it, wouldn't that make any explicit formula, formula for arithmetic linear? Yeah. Degree one. Yeah. yeah? Okay, so that's why we're going to, that's just keep that in mind. Okay, so then, once again, the sum of an arithmetic series is n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. So we're going to be doing the same thing, it's just going to be given a little bit differently. Okay, are we good to get to the example so it can make sense? Because I know right now that's like, whoop. Okay, so here we go, it says find the sum. So that sigma means sum. So we're summing up, now it says our lower limit's 1, our upper limit's 4. So we're summing up four terms. One, two, three, four terms. Is everybody good with that? So I'm just going to write this out probably the first time. So we're fine. we need to find a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4. So is it an explicit formula in terms of n? So can we find the first term? n plus 2, right? Guys, if you don't the number, like that's how you find any term in a sequence. So in this sequence, to find our first term, don't we plug in 1? Because that's an explicit formula, right? So what's our first term going to be? 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, let's find the second term. We'll be plugging in a 2. Isn't that n? So 2 plus 2 is 4. And then 3 plus 2 is 5. And then 4 plus 2 is 6. Now this is the sum. So we're going to be finding the sum of those things. So 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, and voila. Okay? So now we could have done it. Now this one I did this way because that was much, well, that was pretty dang quick, right? We could have also used the formula. Yes? So is n the one you're starting at, like the number you start at? Yes. So the bottom versus n equals is what you start at? Right. Okay. That's our lower limit. Okay, so now let's use the formula. n stands for in this formula, so we just got it doing it this short way. But let's use the formula, too, to check to make sure we've done it right. Because most of the time we're just going to use this because it's going to be a lot quicker. Does that make sense? Because what if there was 100 terms? You don't want to have to write out 100 terms. Okay, so that's why we use this formula, though, right? So n, how many terms? 1 to 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. How many terms are we going to be summing up? So we'll have 4 divided by 2 times a sub 1. Now, you did have to know a sub 1. So you did have to figure out a sub 1. So that would have been 3. 
because we plug in one, right? It started at one. We do need to know our final term. So wouldn't that be plugging in a four? Yep. So our final term was six. So let's check and make sure it came out to be 18. And add that up, which that's two times, because four divided by two is two, and then that's nine. nine, so that's 18. Do you see how we came up with this long two ways? Yep. Okay, questions on that? Okay, let's do another one. So now it says find the sum. So this just means sum, right? So we know that we're doing a series here. So I'm just going to use the formula. So first of all, how many terms do we have? One, if we plug in one, plug in two, up to ten, right? Yeah. So we have ten terms. So I'm going to use the formula. We'll do ten divided by two. Now we do need to know a sub one, our first term. Are we starting at one? So three times one, so I'm going to go up to the side to find a sub one. That would be three times one minus four. Negative one, right? So a sub one is negative one. And then we're adding a sub n, which is our last term, which is 10, right? So I'm going to find a sub 10 real quick. So that'd be three times 10 minus four. So that's 26. And there's the sum, go, calculate it. 124. 125? 125. Okay. 125. Sweet. Questions? No. Okay, looking at this one, let's be really careful. Yikes. We've got to be super careful with this one. So, first of all, we're summing up how many terms? Eight. Not eight. Where's our lower limit? Three. We're starting at three, guys. So let's think about it. If we plug in three, we'll get something, right? Four. Five, six, seven, eight. How many terms are we going to be summing up? Six. Six, right, everybody? Three. You'll get something, right? If you plug in three. Isn't that our lower limit? It's not one. So we plug in three, we'll get something. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. I can't have another finger up because I'm holding things. Are we all good? So our n is six terms for this one. So we're summing up six terms because three to eight would be six. We plug in three, we'll get something, four, five, whatever. Okay, so now we know n is six divided by two times a sub one. a sub one is the lower one, right? So we're finding a sub one, but wouldn't we be plugging in a three? So we're actually starting with a sub three. So that would be our first term in our sequence, right? Everybody, are we good with that? So we'll have what? Three plus 25, guys. Okay, so we have 28 plus our last term in this. 31. So a sub 8 is 8 plus 25, which is 31. Do you have 177? So the sum of the six terms in this series is, we said what? 177. Good. Questions on how to do that? So be really careful with your lower and upper limits here. Okay. We go 14 through 22. Be careful. Be careful with the number of terms, just like in that last example. So here's the problem, guys. Our final term was 8. We're plugging in 8, right? 8 plus 25 is 33. That's why we're not getting it correct. We said 31. Guys, type it in. 8 plus 25 is 33, right? So, if you multiply that out, that's not 177. Sorry, I just took your word for it. It's 183. Does that make sense, everybody? No. What does it make sense about that? We plug in 8 and get 33. That's the last term in this series, isn't it? Hey, think about it, Mason. This is a great question, actually. A lot of people are asking it. Once again, guys, think about it this way. This should help. Okay, this really should help. So everybody listen. People are still thrown off by why there's six terms we're summing up. So this should help. If we, so look, if we plug in three, is that where we're starting? Guys, if we plug in three, won't we get a number? Yes. If we plug in four, won't we get a number? Yes. We plug in five, won't we get a number? Yes. Plug in six, we'll get a number. Yes. Plug in seven, we'll get a number. Yes. Plug in eight, we'll get a number. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six numbers are going to be summed up. Now it makes sense because how many is there a distance between three to eight? Five. 
Then we didn't account for three, so that's why it's six, right? Yeah. Does that make sense, everybody, a little bit better? Okay, continue. So now we're going to go backwards. We're going to be given terms. We're going to be asked to write it as a in summation notation. So we're going to be given a series, and we're going to be writing it in summation notation, so we're going to be going backwards. So make sure you maybe should write this down um, real quick. Remember that summation notation works like this. Now, with working backwards, we are always going to figure out how many terms. We're going to start with one, and then depending on if there's ten terms, they're like one ten. Does that kind of make sense? So with us going backwards, we're just going to figure out how many terms is there, and then we're always going to say n is equal to 1 to 8, if there's 8 terms. Does that make sense? Because not all of the ones we were looking at going forward, like the other way, started with 1, right? But if we're going backwards, we're going to personally write ours starting with first term. Okay? And then the explicit formula, remember, is the formula that produces those terms. So remember, for arithmetic, the explicit formula you can find it by using this formula. We did this the other day, right? Yep. We were writing formulas that it helped us get any term in a sequence, right? Uh -huh. So you'll remember this formula. Write it down if you don't have that. So we'll write it, our explicit formula right there. So remember, the explicit formula for an arithmetic series, or I mean, sorry, sequence is a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, where a sub 1 is the first term and then D is the common difference. N is the number of terms. And if we're writing it in general, then we'd leave it as N, right? Yeah, because then that allows us to find any term. Yeah. Okay. Are we, do we have that written down? Okay, so let's go backwards. Okay, so I have all that written down right here just so we can refer back to that. So it's still right here. Okay, so it says, write each arithmetic series in summation notation. So first of all, 5, 8, 11, first of all, let's write our explicit formula. Because that's pretty easy, right? That's just like what we were doing the other day. So the explicit formula was this, right? What's my a sub 1? 5. And then we have plus n minus 1 times d. What's the common difference? 8 minus 5. 11 minus 8. So aren't we just adding 3 each time? So d is 3. Now we do want this a little bit prettier. Can't we kind of simplify that? Because don't we multiply that through it if we wanted? Uh -huh. So that would be 3n minus 3, right? Yep. Combine that terms. So that would be 3n plus 2. So our explicit formula, so I'm going to put my final answer up here. So our final answer is going to be, okay, the explicit formula part is 3n plus 2. Now that explains how to find all of these terms, right? Yep. Okay, sweet. But now we need to figure out how many terms are in this particular series here. So, so didn't we do that just a minute ago? Okay, so let's see. How much distance is between 5 and 38, right? Isn't that what we were doing just a minute ago to find the number of terms? So you go 38 minus 5, you get 33. But we're not, we're not going in ones, right? We're dividing that by 3. Okay, so that was, we added 3 11 times to get to 38, so there's 12 total, right? So we would say n is equal to 1 up to 12, because that would mean we want the sum of 12 terms. Does that make sense, everybody? n is equal to 1 through 12, oh, that would be, it's 11, right? Because that would have been, oh no, 1, 2, 3, that would be 12. I still I don't know. You have to yes. Isn't there 12 terms total? Yeah, you start with 5 and then go to 2. Yes. I think what is E mean? Sum. The D means common difference. Good question. Yes. No, we had to add 3 11 times to get to 38. Does that make sense? So total of terms would be 12. Kind of make sense? Okay, let's do another one, guys. So we're writing, uh, we're writing, are we good? Okay, it seems like we're good. So we don't need any more examples. I'm confused. I don't understand this point. Well, there's like so much talking going on. I like can't focus up here. and I have to be able to focus to teach good. Okay, so let's do this one. 
<laughs> so we're going backwards once again. So we're given this series, and we're going to write it in summation notation, because isn't it a sum? That's what summation notation means, right? So we know we're going to have a sigma, because that means the sum. And then we've got to find the explicit formula, right? Because that's how the summation notation works. So we know the explicit formula for arithmetic is this. So a sub 1 would have been 7, right? Yeah. Plus n minus 1, because we're going to keep it in general, right? Yeah. And then what's the common difference? 11 four. minus 7. 4. 4, right? Yeah, 4, 4. 4. What's 15 minus 11? 4. So isn't the common difference 4? Yeah. So now the only, like we want this a little bit simplified, just because it's prettier. Oh, just you know what I mean? So distribute it through, we will have... 7 plus 4n minus 4, correct? So we will have 4n plus 3, right? So I go over here and I say 4n plus 3 because that's how you find those terms, right? Okay, sweet. So now we want our lower limit to upper limit. When we're going backwards, we're going to start with our first term. We're going to call this our first term. That's why we get to start with 1. Does that make sense? So we're calling this our first term. So we know n is equal to 1, but how many terms are we summing up? We need to figure out how many terms are in here. So once again, I find the total number of terms. 207 minus 7. There's 200 number, like you're adding 1 200 times. Does that make sense? Yeah. We're not adding 1, we're adding 4, so divide it by 4. 15. So we have to add 4 50 times, correct? So for starting at 7, we added 4 50 more times. So how many total terms are we summing up? 51. So our upper limit is 51. Questions on that? Number 9 I'll do with you. Then I'll let you work, okay? Here we go, guys. Quick. Number 9. So it says write each arithmetic series in summation notation. So, first of all, let's write our explicit formula. So a sub 1 is 10, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. 7 minus 10, we're going to have a seating chart change, especially for YouTube canoodlers. 7 minus 10. 3. 7 minus 10. 3. Wrong. Negative 3. 4 minus 7. Negative 3. Okay, so our common difference is negative 3, okay? Multiplied, right? Let's. Simplify that. So we have 10 plus, multiply that in. Negative 3 and plus 3. So our explicit formula and our final answer is going to be negative 3 and plus 13. Plus 13, correct. Are we all good? Now we want to know, okay, we're calling this our first term, sweet. So n is equal to 1. How many terms are we summing up here? So how many times do we subtract 3? Total, total. So we're all going to do negative 5 minus 10, right? Yeah. Divided by negative 3, right? That's 5. So how many times did we have to add negative 3 to get to negative 5? 6, right? So there's 6 total terms. So there's 6 total terms that we're summing up. Are we all good? Yes. We found it like we've been finding it all along. How many terms are total here? Right? So we said, okay, how did we get from 10 to negative 5? That we found the number between that, but we were subtracting 3, not 1. That's why we divided by negative 3. Yeah. That's the number of times you added negative 3, but then that's we have to account for the first term. So we added 3, negative 3, 5 times. So the total times, total number of terms is 6. It is confusing. That's why I'm doing the best I can up here. Okay, do we need to do 13? So we can, I can show you this. So it says use a graphing calculator to find the sum. So we could do this by hand or we could use our graphing calculator. I'm going to teach you how to do it, but it's a little bit of a process. So this is how you do it on your calculator. Everybody following me through it because it's going to be a mess otherwise. Okay, so pull up your calculator. The first thing you have to do is it's in the list button. So now notice list is by the stat key. So you're going to do second list. Now you're going to go over to, we want the sum of our sequence. So go over to math. Now look at number five. Do you see how it says sum? So go down to sum, hit enter. So we want the sum of a sequence. So now we need to go back into list one, I mean into the list option again. So go second stat again. 
and then go over to ops and then sequence number five so we want the sum of a sequence so you hit enter so now you're gonna um my calc the newer ones are making you oh, okay wait a minute my older calculator didn't make me do this okay so i uh, I'm assuming, how many of you see this option? I don't know. Okay, awesome. I do. Okay, this is what we're going to type in. So we're doing number 23, and then the rest of you that have the old calculator, I'll go over it with you in a second. So it says um, EXPR. So I'm assuming that that means the, the actual thing here, like the equation. <laughs> So x plus 3. Sorry, I've, I've only done it on my old calculator. So let's type in x plus 3. We'll see if this works, dang nabbit. And then our variable is x. So we put in x. Are we good? And then our starting point is at, on number 23, it's 1. And then our ending point is at 15, correct? We'll see if this works. I've never done it on a new calculator. Okay. So, those of you with an old calculator, you hit, you have some sequence, right? Yep. Okay, now you're going to type in the equation next. So, type in x plus 3. Wait, wait, where are we starting? Just like you can see it up here. So, you with the old calculators, you have a sum and a sequence, and you're in this option, and it's blank, right? Wait, so, the first thing you're going to type in is the equation, x plus 3. Yep. Then you have to type in the x, like the variable that we're talking so x, and then comma, your lower limit, which is 1, comma, your upper limit, which is 15. Then you close your parentheses, and then I'm going to close it again around all of it. You hit enter, and it gives you the sum, 165. Yeah, but if you can check your work, that's, not, that's a good thing. And you know what I mean? I'll come look and see what you've done. Questions on that? Try, try it. Practice those. So you have five minutes to practice typing in 23 through 28 with your calculator.